Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving our praise, our honor, our glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of Le'aki out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line and your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, a Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And this time we're going to go into the second uh, little portion of Joel 3. And uh, yeah, man, <laughs> prophecy has been fulfilled. We see what's going on in the Middle East. And a lot of it is propaganda, which is, 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 is just, it's just what it is. You have those 1948ers who are looking for an excuse to go, in, go into Iran, but this is just going to cause more of the tension to build between these heathen nations until it accumulates into what? World War Three, the war to end all wars, man. See, this is what's happening in the earth. Yeah, this might be a false flag, but tensions are going to be raised between these different nations, and it's just going to intensify. Because, matter of fact, let's read well, verse 9 real quick. Joel 3 and 9, it says, Proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. And this is what we see happening. You see? This is exactly what we see happening in the Middle East. And as time, and as we move forward in time, you're going to see more and more of those nations gather over there in the, uh, uh, that land known as Saudi Arabia, the Middle East. You see? The land of Yahweh Shapat or Yahweh's judgment. Now, the reason I'm going into this is because you have a lot of, uh, once again, you have a lot of uh, tension raising, arising between these different nations. We had a couple of days ago. Matter of fact, let's get this article real quick. Not this one, but, uh, but this one. Where you had what? Putin threatens the West with total nuclear destruction, leaving no chance of survival in the event of a strike on Russia as he warns his Satan II and flying Chernobyl missiles are ready for use in ranting anti-U.S. speech. So we had that type of talk going on from, from the president of Russia, right? Now we also have this. We have from the Miami Herald. It says, U.S. Air car uh, aircraft carrier sent toward Israel is world's largest warship. You see that? And and, there, and this is being sent to the to that area of Israel because what? It, uh, America supports Israel. So once again, this this whole thing with well, Hamas, you see, this this is a false flag, man. You see, this is them looking for justification to, to target Iran. And this is what they're going to use to get their justification. Now you have America stepping up and being a shield to Israel. This is what the most I said would happen. And once again, you're going to start seeing more and more of those nations gather over there in that area. Oh, it was another, that's on my other phone. It was another, it was another article that came out that said the U.S., the U.K., um, how you doing? The U.S., oh my God, nosy ass fucking eat mic, man. But yeah, so, uh. Matter of fact, let me pause this one more time. See if I can find an article for y'all. Alright, so I did find it. This is uh from Inside History, uh, a page of an Instagram that, that comes with some pretty good uh articles and headlines. Uh, it says uh US, UK, France, Germany, and Italy declare that they will uh they will support Israel to defend itself. You see that? So the nations are picking sides, man. And it all leads up to them being gathered over there in the Middle East for this war. You see, because once again, this, this whole Hamas thing is a false flag that Israel is trying to use to point the blame at Iran. Because they need that justification. And you have those nations who are saying they, they're going to back Israel to defend itself. You see, and we know that if that does happen, Big Brother Russia is going to step in according to prophecy, man. 
all signs are pointing pointing to a great war breaking out in the earth because we know and understand <laughs> matter of fact matter of fact let's get let's get this real quick this is jeremiah 49 see if i can find this real quick let's do this Yep, because those those small hatters, those 1948ers, they're going to be the ones who are going to cause this thing to pop off, man, because it tells us, according to prophecy, Jeremiah 49 and 20, Therefore hear the counsel of Yahweh that he have taken against Edom, and his purposes that he have purposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely the least of the flock, which are the 1948ers, those people who are proclaiming to be the Jews, right, shall draw them out. Surely he shall make his, they, he shall make their habitation desolate with them. So these 1948ers are going to be the cause of this thing popping off, and we see it with all these provo provocations. You see, now all, all this uh, provoking of Iran, man. You see, this is what's coming. Now, when that happens, what's going to what's going to take place? Russia, according to Ezekiel 38, they're going to step into the picture. And do exactly what the Most High programmed them, programmed them to do. So this is Ezekiel 38 and 1. It says, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against it. This is talking about Russia. You see? The Most High said to prophe prophesy against it. And say what? Verse 3. And say, Thus saith the Lord power Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, even though the Most High is using Russia, you see, to fulfill his will, he's not with them. Why? It's because they're Edomites. You see? The Most High is not for Edom. He's just using these people to fulfill his purpose, to fulfill his will. That's it. It says what? And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And this is what's happening. This is why you hear him the Russian president talking about completely annihilating America with nuclear missiles, man. That's the most I put those hooks into his jaws and and bringing and bringing Russia back into that warlike spirit. This is why they been on the fucking uh a fucking complete uh damn what's the word? They they've just been in the spirit to make all these <laughs> monstrous nuclear missiles, man. You see. They've been in the spirit to do all that. This is why they've come up with this technology of the hypersonic nuclear missile. And the, and the time is going to come where, they, where, where they're going to pass these, th these things out to their to their uh, allies. That's the most I put in these put these damn Russians in that spirit of war. This is why you have Putin <laughs> talking spicy like this, man. <laughs> It's the most I put those hooks into his jaws and turning him back and, and, into that warlike USSR spirit, man. You see? That's what it is. Now we go back to Ezekiel 38. It says what? Verse 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine armies, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling the swords. That's what that, that's what it is. Now, if you recall, a couple years ago, you had fifty or so African presidents. They went to uh, Russia for basically a conference. They were making all type of trade deals. Russia was supplying them with all type of weaponry, man. You see, he let them wear their African garb. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he showed a, a great uh, hospitality to those nations. Why? Because those are his allies. That's what the prophecy said he would do. And he's, he, he's supplying them with the weaponry they need. He's supplying, he's, he's supplying fighter jets. He's supplying all type of AKs and other type of uh, uh, semi to automatic rifles. He's, he's offering tanks because... The Russians are known for their tanks. They got a lot of fucking tanks. 
They're supplying their uh, uh, allies with tanks. Hell, they supply, they're, they're supplying some of their allies with uh, uh, aircraft carriers. Big ass Navy ships. Why? It's because that's what prophecy say would be happening. That's what that's what the Most High said they would be doing. Everything on this earth is moving according to the Most High's will, man. Everything. And according to the Most High's will, this shit is about to pop off. War is about to pop off. Now, we know that before this war fully pops off, what has to happen? The RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, it must be made mandatory. You see? That's a must before World War III pops off. Until we see that thing made mandatory, you see, we, we got to wait still. But we know what's coming according to the Most High's will. Now it goes on to say, now these are the allies of America, Persia. The first one on the list is who? Persia, which is who? Iran. You see, so that's why we say if America steps in with Israel to, to go into Iran, best believe Russia is going to be there to back Iran up. Ethiopia and Libya, which are what? Hamite or African nations. All of them, which. <laughs> all. <laughs> hey, call her love. Yeah, about Shemiel Shah. Because we see it happening, man. We see it happening. We see this whole thing being formed together, all according to prophecy. It says what? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomar in the north quarters, which goes into Turkey. And right now, Turkey is one of the allies of America. You see? For now. You see? For now, that's what it is. But eventually, when that time comes, Turkey, they're going to side with Russia, man. How do we know this? Because prophecy says so. And the most I has been having it happen where to where You've been having uh, uh, America and Turkey have some falling outs. So it's tension. It's, 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 it's beef between Turkey and America right now. You see? All of that is going to lead to Turkey saying, fuck Babylon the Great, and they're going to side with Russia. It says what? Be thou, pre be thou prepared. Oh, so like, let me reverse this again. Ezekiel 38 and 6, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togemar of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. And you got other nations that are going to join hands with, uh, 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 with Russia. India, those BRICS nations, China. <laughs> you see? It's like the most I put in the squad together, man. You see a squad for each side. He got the U.S. over here, the U.S., the U.K., Israel. Uh, who, who else was on that fucking list? <laughs> Italy. Who else? Oh, yeah. So the most I set the squads up, man. U.S., U.K., France, Germany, and Italy with Israel. You see? And then you got on the other side, Russia, China. <laughs> Russia, China, India. <laughs> uh, South America. You see? Those African Hamite nations. The most I, he, he he's putting he's he's setting the teams up, man. So this war can pop off. And the most I so cold with it. The most I so cold with it. <laughs> he he gonna have the allies. He gonna have the allies of America turn upon him, and and, and, and help Russia and his allies destroy this place. That's what's coming, bro. And you got these, you got these dumbass Israelites out here still talking about God bless America. No, bro, it's over. It's over. It's been over from the beginning. And you just can't see it. All roads lead to World War Three, man. You see, verse seven says, "What be thou prepared and prepare thyself, thou and all thy company, that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them." And that's exactly what's happening. You see, that's exactly what's going to happen. You see. Why? It's because the Most High is marching these armies to the Middle East to be destroyed. Let's go back to uh, Joel. Like I say, and, and, and the fucking, those 1948s are going to spark this thing off. But we know we must see that MOTB brought to the forefront first and foremost. Now it says what? We're reverse 9 again. 
Joel 3 and 9, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. And this is what we are beginning to see happen. Because don't think for a second that, that America is just going to going to just uh leave the middle east you're going to start seeing you're going to start seeing more and more warships roll over into that area and you're going to start seeing more and more of the armies of the east going into that area you see that's <sighs> prophecy baby verse 10 says what beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears let the weak say i'm stronger and that's what's taking place all these nations are taking all the funding that they could be using to build up their agriculture, to feed their people, and they're putting those funds toward military resources, man. Whether that be weapons, or nuclear missiles, so forth and so on. And the nations, at one point in time, who were, who were considered weak, are now saying they're strong because what? Now they have nuclear capability. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, it's the most high in allowing them to acquire that technology. Whether they're develop, developing it from, for themselves or they're getting it, getting it from one of their allies. Oh, there's another article I did a lesson on a, a couple of years ago. How uh, Russia was talking about uh, mass producing nuclear warheads and hypersonic, and hypersonic glide vehicles. Meaning he, hey, he, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin was in the spirit of what? Putting this fucking, putting these, uh, uh, this weaponry on conveyor belts and just churning it out around the clock. You see? And what do you think they're gonna do? They gonna they gonna dish it out to their allies and be a guard up to them. And this is why you have some of these weak nations who would have never thought to raise a hand to America 50, 60, 70 years ago doing just that. Because now, hey, we got some shit to fight with too. You ain't the only one with this capability. So these smaller countries are even saying, I am strong. They gonna they hey, they gonna play a part in this <laughs> in this as well. You see? It says what? Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down. Oh, yeah, how will Bashem Yahweh And this is exactly what's going to happen. Now, in the midst of all this happening, in the midst of this World War III, the mighty ones that are going to come down is Yahu. Is who? Yahweh Shai and the Alahayim. Yahweh Shai and the heavenly host, which are the angels, coming back in the chariots. You see? That's what's going to happen. And it tells us this. We can go and get that account of the Apocrypha. In 2nd Edris 13, start at 3. Yeah. 2nd Edris 13 and 3. This is when Yahweh Shah and the Alahayim come down from the spiritual realm. Because that's what's going to take place in the midst of World War III. So, guess what? If, if, if any if any other so-called major event takes place where they try to portray an alien invasion and they come and they at the White House shaking hand with the president and making peace, hey, that's that's false, man. That's a false flag because the Bible tells you, you see, according to the Most High's will, how it's going to be when the when the Messiah makes his second coming. Yeah, how shall will show up in the midst of World War Three? You see. As all the nations have gathered there for what? For war. Second Edges 13 and 3 it says, What? And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. This is our Lord Yahweh Shah with his heavenly army, the angels in the chariots, which are so called UFOs. And when he had turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him, because everyone is going to be shook in that day, man. Because you got to understand, Yahweh Shah is coming back with great power and glory. You see, matter of fact, here we go. Let's get it. Revelation 1 and 7, it says what? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, so let it be. This is what it's going to be when Yahweh shall returns. It ain't going to be this, this BS these Christians talking about some damn rapture, where the Lord is going to come in the middle of the night, and ain't nobody going to know. No, when Yahweh shall returns, everyone is going to witness him. Every eye shall see him. They're going to behold his majesty. They're, they're going to behold his glory. You see? They're going, to, they're going to behold his strength and his power. That's what's coming. This, this is how Yahweh Shah is returning back. It's not going to be some low-level event. This is going to be the, the greatest thing talked about on the earth for the rest of time. 
and everyone is gonna be shook. All these scoffers and these mockers and these naysayers and these shit talkers, you see, gonna be shook at the glory of our Lord, man. So going back, it says what? Verse four. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, which are those laser beams, you see those weapons that he have on those chariots, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell up when it filled up the fire. Because when Yahweh Shah returns, he's gonna be zapping people, man, as righteous judgment, punishing the wicked for their wickedness. And it tells us this in Jeremiah. Let's see if I can get it around the first first try. Because I always get it backwards. It's Jeremiah 32 and 25, if I'm mistaken. Damn. <laughs> 25 and 32. I always get that mixed up. <laughs> Jeremiah 25 and 32 says what? Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah of hosts. Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. This is what Yahweh Shah is bringing when he returns. How do we know this? Because he told us in Matthew 10 and 36 that what? Think not, and this is the red letter. This is the Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You see that? Yahweh Shah is coming to wage war. This is why when he returns, evil is going to go forth from nation to nation, meaning bad times. You see? It tells you that what? That great earthquake, not a great earthquake, that great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. That great whirlwind, whirlwind represents that gigantic UFO Yahweh Shah is going to return on. You see? with the rest of the heavenly hosts in those chariots. You see, making their way to the earth, make their way to, to make to make their way to World War Three, to dismantle the heathen nations, as it's gonna tell us in uh second Edges thirteen. You see, and what's gonna happen when he returns? And the slain of Ye uh, of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried, they shall be dung upon the ground. This is what uh this is what the prophet Ezra is saying right here. He's seeing Yahweh shall make his way across the earth, and as he's going, he's zapping people with that fire. That concentrated fire from them chariot. Zapping motherfuckers, man. Putting them to death. That's why I said at that day the slain of the Lord shall be at, shall be from one from at that. The slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. Yahweh Shah is coming to make a great slaughter on this planet, man. You see why? Because wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Everybody's gonna have to pay when Yahweh Shah returns, man. Everyone. It says what? Verse 5. And after this I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the men the man that came out of the sea. These are the men that have been gathered for war in the Middle East for a what? For World War Three. From all over the world, man. They are being gathered. From the north, east, south, and west, from all over the planet. You see? It says what? Verse 6. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. This is a chariot that Ezra is, is speaking of. It was so big he thought it was a mountain, man. This is how we going to know when our Lord Yahweh Shah returns. Because, hey, the Most High has given us the understanding. He's given us the vision through the Holy Spirit. So, hey, like, like Yahweh Shah said... If it was possible, they would deceive even the very elect. See, they're gonna get you people when they talk when they when they uh, fabricate this false alien invasion. They're gonna get you motherfuckers with that shit. They're not gonna get the elect because we know and understand how Yahweh Shah is returning. We understand and know what type of demeaning he's coming back in. We understand and know that Yahweh Shah is coming back to wage war. So if, if an alien invasion, a so-called alien invasion does happen, and ain't no war being waged, or you see, like I said, they at the White House shaking hands with the president. Some great men with big ass eyes. We know it ain't the Lord because we under hey the most high has told us how Yahweh Shah is returning, man. So they ain't gonna be able to get us with that bullshit, Lord willing. Because we know our Lord is coming back on a gigantic chariot, man. Humongous is gonna cut, it's gonna block out, it's gonna be so fucking big, it's gonna block out the lights of heaven. It says what? Verse 7. But I would have seen the region, the place where I, the, the hill was graven, and I could not. So Ezra was like, man, this is a fucking mountain missing from the planet somewhere. But no, it was just how big Yahweh Shah's chariot is. 
8, it says what? And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, yet there's fight. Because when you, you have to understand, man, these soldiers are about to go to the Middle East to fight this World War III. They have not been briefed on what's going to take place. They have not been briefed on, on yeah, the Son of God is going to show up in the midst of this, and you guys are going to have to fight them. They ain't been told that. And oh, another thing, he's going to come back on a gigantic spaceship. <laughs> they ain't been told this, man. They haven't been told this. You see? So when it happens, they're going to be fucking terrified to the point they're not going to want to fight. But guess what? The Most High is going to put the Spirit upon them to fight anyway because what? They have to fulfill prophecy. They have to fulfill prophecy. And it's not going to be like they show you in Independence Day, Will Smith taking down the chariots and shit with a nuclear warhead. No, man. These, these vehicles are impenetrable. They're indestructible, man. You can't. You, there's nothing that you're going to be able to do, or be able to do to them. You see? You see that? So the Most High is going to put the spirit upon them to fight. Why? Because they have to fulfill the the prophecy of Revelation twelve and seven of what? The war being fought in heaven. This is the true understanding of the war fought in heaven. Not that bullshit that the pagan Christian church has given the world for all these centuries, man. Talking about Satan fought against the Most High and was cast out of heaven. No. The war in heaven pertains to what's going to happen when Yahweh Shah returns to the earth in the midst of World War III. The heathen nations, beginning with the Edomites, are going to try to fight against the Lord. And Yahweh Shah is going to dismantle them easily. It's going to be an overwhelming victory on behalf of our Lord Yahweh Shah, man. So Revelation 12 and 7 says what? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in, fought in his angel. You see that dragon represents Esau and his fighter jets, his F-16s, his F-22s, now his F-35s. You see? <clears throat> this is why these damn devils uh, uh, established a space force upon the Donald Trump. You thought that was coincidence? No. That happened because they're trying to fight against the Lord Yahweh Shah when he returns. It's all prophecy, man. So that so the uh, dragon and his angels fought against Michael and his angels, and what happened? Verse eight and prevailed not; neither was their place found any more. <laughs> and and prevailed not; neither was their place found any more in heaven. So this 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 fucking high horse that these heathen have been living on for all this time, guess what? That's about to be taken away from them once Yahweh Shah dis destroys them, man. Heaven is a condition on the earth, and that's how the heathen have been living up on the east. Or they've been living in their heaven. Innumerable wealth, you see, enjoying liberties and freedoms that us Israelites could never have in this system. This is their heaven, man. But guess what? Yahweh Shah is coming to, to, to dismantle it. He's coming to destroy this shit. You see? It says what? And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, the deceiver and the adversary, which is who? East, the, the nation of Esau, Edom, beginning with the Amalekites, which are the 1948ers, the ones who are going to who, who are going to spark this World War III and cause it to pop off. That's the that's who that old serpent called the devil and Satan is. You see, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him, meaning what? They were cast into a lower state. That's what's about to happen. All this liberty and all this freedom that these heathen nations have had so far, it's, it's, it's over, man. It's over. And this is why you see us go so hard and, and, and also fervent in the spirit because we are longing for this day. We're ready to rule, man. We're ready to be sovereign and have freedom and liberty in the earth and complete righteousness. Tired of living in the world of fucking wickedness where everything is ass backwards, man. Goddamn bizarro world out here. You see? And our Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to remedy all that. So this is why we call out to the Most High to send them back. And we're going to continue to do so. To hell with how anybody feels about it. Now we go back. So it says what? Second Edges 13 and 8. And after this I beheld and lo, 
All they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet durst fight. Why? It's because the Most High is going to put that spirit upon them to fulfill that prophecy of Revelation 12 and 7. That great war fought in heaven. You see? Verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any sword, nor any instrument of war. Yeah, your house ain't gonna be on the on top of the chariot with a fucking red bandana on, a red bandana on, and two gun belts across the chest. You see, with fucking gigantic machine guns. Nah, man. He don't need carnal weapons of war. All he's gonna use are those spiritual weapons that are on, or that come with, or how, however it works. In that chariot, man, because it tells us what. Verse ten. But I saw that he sent out of his mouth, which is which was out of the chariot, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. This is what he's going to use to dismantle all of the nation's militaries in one blast. <laughs> Verse eleven says what. And they all and they were all mixed together: the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. You see? That's what Yahweh is going to do to these nations' militaries once they're all gathered together over there in the Middle East to fight this World War III. One blast is all it's going to take to, des to destroy everything in that area. One blast is all it's going to take. Now, as we go back to Joel 3, it says what? Joel 3 and 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. And that's what is going to happen when Yahweh shall return. Verse 12 says what? Let the healing be wakened or roused up. And we see that happening, man. And guess what? They're going to get more and more uh, uh, roused up. To what? Hey, they're going to start marching to the Middle East. You see? And come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which is Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. How is he going to do that? By way of the Lord Yahweh Shah, as we just read in 2nd Ezra 13. Verse 13, <laughs> call out Yahweh Shemiel Shah. Verse 13 says what? Put ye in the circle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, for the, flat, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. And that's what we just read about there in 2nd Edges 13. You see that judgment that the Most High is going to pour down upon the heathen in the Middle East, in the midst of this war. Why? For what's been done unto the Israelites. We're gonna, hey, Yahweh Shai gonna get rid of all the nation's militaries in one, in, in one fell swoop, man. Easy. Now, you, you, you're gonna have fucking detachments that's still gonna be in their, in their homelands or whatever. And guess what? When we come down out of heaven, whenever that time is, we're gonna go through and dismantle the rest of whatever the heathen got set up. And we're gonna get our kingdom established, man, according to prophecy. It says what? Verse 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. <laughs> it says what? Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. You see that? How is it going to shake from that nuclear destruction that's going to uh, befall America, man? That's how the earth is going to shake. Because, yes, America will be destroyed in the midst of World War III. You see? It says what? But Yahweh will be the hope of his people. You see, even though we know all this, we ain't panicking, we ain't fretting, we ain't trying to get a passport to leave the country because we think that's going to cause us to escape the judgment. No. We're sitting here and hoping that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah saves us from this destruction. You see? As he's promised. And the elect will be delivered, man. So have faith in that. So I say as what? But Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah will be the hope of his people. 
And the only ones who are truly hoping on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah are the remnant. This is what we're telling you, man. This this is getting the proper understanding of this doctrine and the fullness of it with the with the right names. You see? It's deadly serious. Because if you ain't got it, you will be left here to be destroyed with when these missiles hit, man. Because if, if you ain't hoping upon your how about Shem Yahweh Shah and all truth and sincerity according to what's written, ain't no salvation for you. You cannot just call the most high whatever you want to call him. You cannot just believe upon these scriptures however you want to believe it. You want to take this part right here and you want to hold on to that, but you want to cast this part right here behind you. That's not how it works. You have to digest the entire role. We have to eat the whole thing, man. Have a the, the full understanding of the most high's will. Camps are out here playing games, and, and, and bro, we, we're on the brink of World War III. That MOTB is right around the corner, man. You see? Right around the corner. And when that thing is presented and made mandatory, it's on, man. It's on. So this is not a fucking game. If you're not hoping in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, you have no hope. You see? <laughs> this is why GMS and the brothers who are affiliated with GMS preaching the same doctrine, we go so hard to give you the proper understanding of these scriptures, man, because we know it's deadly serious. And we do it because if we don't do it that way, the most high gonna fucking destroy us. We're not out here for vain glory or filthy lucre or try to be the man. We don't give a fuck about none of that. We'll get glory and, and, and innumerable wealth, and we're going to be the man forever in the kingdom of heaven. But for right now, we're set up to preach this doctrine the right way. That's all it's a fucking about. That's all it's about. We don't give a fuck about you being in your feelings or you being offended because we're rebuking you and telling you that your doctrine is trash, that the names you're calling on is fake names, that you're going to be destroyed if you don't if you don't stop doing that shit you're doing. Look, man. You see, we're washing the blood off of our hands because this shit about to get crazy out here. We are not finna be out here babying you, man. Colin and hold your fucking hand. It's too, it's too late in the game for that. You either get your shit right and get this doctrine the, the correct way as the as the true teachers, the true leaders of Israel is teaching you. Beginning with the elder apostle Dahar, the elder apostle Gabar, the elder apostle Rakar, the elder apostle Ari Amlav, and the, and, and the elders up under them on down, man. You see? That's who's giving you the truth. According to the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, man. And if you're not following that way, the Lord is going to fucking melt you here in Babylon the Great. Because it's going down. <laughs> it's about to go down, man. All this stuff is not happening in earth by coincidence. This is prophecy. <laughs> this is prophecy, man. And you can continue to call us haters. Call us broke, bones, whatever. But guess what? Keep doing that shit because you make it, you make it better for us to go up into that chair than your ass being left here. For real, man. You niggas, stupid, simple ass niggas, man. Like, this shit is dead, bro. Like, bro. Whatever. Whew. Joel 3 and 16. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall make, shall shake. Salaki. Hell, I'm reading. But Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah would be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. You see that? That's our hope. That's where our strength lies. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, walking in his way, having faith in Yahweh Shah, loving the brothers. You see, with the true understanding of what these scriptures say and what the true understand and having the true understanding of the Most High's will. That's going to cause us to be stable in the times we're coming into, man. Lord, when we continue to endure. You see? Verse 17 says what? Well, so ye shall know that I am Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, your power, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. Why? Because the elect is going to be beamed up and see and, and snatched away from this destruction that's coming to be brought into complete righteousness. You see up under that second covenant, being brought back into that completely holy state. You see? And there shall be no and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. You see, no more strangers in our land. Hey, all those people who are over there fighting over their land, <laughs> they don't belong to them anyway. They're going to be destroyed. You see, we'll never be oppressed again. We'll, we'll never go into slavery again. We'll never be in the state ever again. 
That's why all this is being done, man. The Most High is about to save us, save us from this condition, but it's going to take all hell and complete chaos to break out in the earth for him to do so. You see? But that's what it is, man. Now, we ain't saying World War III going to pop off tomorrow. Or hell, even by the end of the year. What we're telling you is things are intensifying. And as we move forward, they're going to continue to intensify. Until what? The MOTB is presented and made mandatory. You see? And World War III is going to be on. <laughs> it's going to be on, man. It's going to be a full-fledged war. Full-fledged hot war. Ain't, no, ain't going to be no going back. But that's what's coming, man. And we're going to continue to do the job of the prophets alert and, and sound the trumpets. You see? And, and, and the process of doing that. Hey, we washing our hands, man. You can't say you ain't been warned. So, Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect because that's what we do it for through the Holy Spirit. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of the out there. Pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah's created us to do. Damn say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba.